and do more with their, their talents. Can I just get a show of hands? I wonder how many people here who actually did visit the uh, homes on show throughout the month of May, the Exemplar Homes Tour. How, how many people visited the homes? So nearly everybody. It's fantastic. So we don't have to talk too much about the homes. Um, what I do want to talk about is, is some tips for making a healthy home. Um, some of the things perhaps that, that weren't covered, um, but also promote some of the, the services the City Council is delivering. We, we run the Build Back Smarter service, which is a, has these guides, and you're welcome to pick up these guides uh, today. They're, they're down at the end of the table over there, and they're in the homes that you visited as well. Um, but they're also online, so you can go to uh, buildbacksmarter.co.nz and, and find out more about those. One is around building new homes, the other about home renovation. But in addition to those guides, which are all very good, we actually have people going around providing free advice in your home. So if you're thinking about renovating your home, and I know a lot of people are thinking about building, but if you're thinking about renovating a home, or maybe you know a family friend, friend family or member or friend who, who would, want, have, would want their home to be sort of warmer and healthier for them, then feel free to give um, Bill Buck Smarter a call. We have three companies who are delivering free face-to-face -face advice in your home to make your home warm, dry, and healthy. And the three companies are there, Energy Smart, Aircon, and Community Energy Action. And they're not there to sell you something, they're there to give you advice so that you can make an informed choice about the best ways to, to improve the health of your home. Uh, they look at all the different aspects of the home, so it's the whole, whole house, uh, and also give you a written healthy home improvement plan, which looks at maybe the next 10 years, what you might do to improve your home over time. Um, it was born out of the earthquake recovery opportunity to make sure homes could be better than they might otherwise have been through the insurance process, and uh, it's still around at the moment. Um, but look, we have fantastic response from the community. We've helped over 4,000 homes with the Bill Bucks Motor Service. And just to give you an indication of satisfaction, these are all the thank you cards that people uh, are giving um, Community Energy Action for running that service. So thousands of people um, are really thankful for getting that independent, uh, professional advice in their homes. Uh, people talking about needing to have a builder, a plumber, an engineer in their home to give them the same sort of advice that these advisors give. So a uh, fantastic service to uh, consider. Buildbacksmarter.co.nz more. Um, the City Council is also uh, obviously supporting the Exemplar Homes Tour and we're doing that because most of the homes uh, that are higher in performance are not available for you to go and see. They're not show homes. And so most of the show homes that are out there are just built to the building code, as you'd be aware. And so this was a big gap we saw uh, as a city council and trying to expose people, get people to experience the quality and the design of, of homes and, and you know, walk into the, on a cold day, walk into these homes and realize how warm and comfortable they are throughout the home, every room warm and dry and healthy. So being able to experience those homes was a real important part of uh, getting people to think differently and getting an informed choice so that you knew, in fact, homes could be better, warmer, dry, healthier than perhaps the building code would, would um, permit. So we are really pleased to have, as I've said already, the super home movement in town. And uh, we're thrilled to have the Exemplar Homes Tour being offered in partnership with them. Um, again, we had a fantastic response. About um, 3,000 people came through the homes, which was amazing. We had a great range of homes on show. Um, there's some of them there, but there was 10 homes, as you might have experienced some of those. Um, you know, large family homes through to inner city, small compact living, um, affordable, sort of healthy, efficient homes through to sort of stylish, luxurious, you know, sustainable homes. Um, a range of technology on the show as well, wonderful technologies which we're going to hear more about shortly. Uh, but, you know, wonderful inventions like, uh, you know, airtight walls, the sort of passive house idea of closing out drafts and wind and, and stopping the cold from coming in and losing the heat. Uh, you know, solar underfloor heating systems. What a fantastic idea to, to heat your home with the sun and also water heating as well with the sun. Um, you know, super efficient windows, the wonderful windows that were on display in the homes. And you could actually touch and feel and see how, how they worked. Uh, wonderful experience there. And then some things you couldn't see, of course, like low impact foundations, these incredibly smart ways to build foundations uh, on TC through land. And again, we had a wonderful response and, and you've turned out tonight, but actually this is what people said about the tour as well, what people loved about the tour was that it was inspirational. That uh, you, know, you really enjoyed the, the self-guided aspect of the tour, that you had time to look through the homes yourself, you weren't pressured, you could wander around and touch and feel and experience those homes yourself. And that you could talk to the designer or the builder or in fact the students who are gonna be here tonight talking to you shortly. Um, so really lovely response from the community. In a, in a survey we, we asked, the, the, um, and many of you may have filled it out, asked uh, what people felt about the, the tour and how they enjoyed it. And this was some of the responses.
fantastic response. Um, we also run Housing Matters uh, series, the City Council, with MBIE to promote better design in industry. So these are industry focused events uh, where members of the industry can come together to learn, share, connect, collaborate and innovate and just be inspired by some really great designs and solutions. So we've done it over the, in the past, we've done surviving the slowdown, thinking about what happens on the other side of the, of the, the boom, uh, how people might survive that. Quality medium density housing, really important issue for New Zealand, and we've done a discussion on that, and off-site construction, you know, high, high performance off-site construction, but to come, we've got innovative financing, new ways of, of getting people into affordable homes and doing it in, in a, a much more collaborative way. Uh, community building, actually not just building homes, but actually building communities is another key thing we want to talk to the industry about, and the quality small design homes. So there's some uh, different themes that are coming up, and if you're a designer or builder, you're welcome to come along to those. Uh, and the website there's Beacon Pathway, they, they host that for us in partnership with the City Council and MBIE, the government. So you might say, why are we bothering? Why, what is it all about? Why, why are we doing this? And I, I think it's because our homes are crap, generally speaking. Oh, yeah. And I liken it like this, from a thermal point of view, from an energy point of view, we live in wooden tents. And I wonder if it's because New Zealand loves the great outdoors. We love going camping over summer, so we expect that when we come home, our homes perform as well as a tent. Well, they do. And you might think, what are we talking about? Well, when it's cold and wet and hot outside, well, guess what? It's cold, wet or hot inside your house too. And that's what we've grown up with. That's what our parents and our grandparents have suffered through. And we just think that's just what happens. That's just the way it is. Well, if you've been to those homes in the month of May, you'll find out that, of course, it's not the case. There's new ways of thinking. But there's another real important reason I'm concerned about it. It's because it affects our health. We have some dreadful statistics in New Zealand. Awful, in fact. Um, but here's one. You're five times more likely to have asthma if you have condensation on the window and visible mould in the house. Five times more likely. Now, it's not surprising then that New Zealand has one of the highest rates of asthma in the world, bar none. The highest rates of asthma because our homes are cold, damp, drafty, not good. The World Health Organization asks us to think about um, homes that are, oh sorry, that our homes should be a minimum of 16 degrees in the bedroom and 18 in the living spaces or warmer uh, if you're elderly or young. And a humidity of between 40 and 60% humidity. How many people actually measure the temperature and humidity of their homes? We take a great deal of it. Oh, okay, you go on, show your hands. How many go on there? So there's a, yep, okay, that's impressive. Well done. Well done, you. Shame on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> we take a great deal of interest uh, in the outdoor weather, don't we? we? We watch the news and we follow the newspaper and we really want to know what the weather's doing on the outside. Well, we don't give a toss about the place we spend most of our time in. We spend most of our time in the home. So it's really important to measure so that you know your house is performing well or not. And so here's a little gizmo in my hand, a little gauge. It's 10 bucks to buy one of these, or, or the, the one on the picture there is about um, $30. So this measures temperature and humidity. I challenge anyone tonight to go home, buy one of these, or we'll get this one online. It's called a twin dial. Yes? Where you buy them from? Um, you can buy them from the health board if you like, but I can, I can help you. What I do is, I'll, if I send an email out with the information about this, it's, sorry to put it on the slide. Um, it's called twin dial. It's a simple, really simple little plastic gizmo that gives you the temperature and humidity, and then you know where you are at. You can respond to it. Because unfortunately, when our homes are cold and damp, they kill people. Our homes are actually killing people. We have 10 times more people dying in the homes than there are road, road deaths, 10 times. In fact, most of those are elderly. Um, so you could say, well, that doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> or you could say, actually, that's not okay. I want my grandma and granddad to live a bit longer, thanks. I want to enjoy their time because that is not the way it should be. Um, a cold, damp home, results in asthma, as we already mentioned, lung disease, heart disease, strokes, blood clots, depression, uh, sorry, arthritis and depression. Let me give you an example. The most common way of heating a bedroom is body heat, right? And then second to that is a light bulb. We don't heat our bedrooms, we just don't. Now, I don't know if you're really, really active in your bedroom, you could try as you might. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna get your bedroom to 16 degrees with body heat alone. You could probably bring up with some friends that maybe, maybe that would help. But, <laughs> but in a cold room, even if you are in a warm bed, you're lying in a bed and your head is cold. And when your head is cold, the blood thickens in your head 
and when that happens, it can lead to blood clots in the brain, which of course we call strokes. That is one of the main ways people will die, and the other main way people die is through, is through lung infections. They get colds, and the colds get worse and worse and worse, and they die. In fact, it's so bad that in 2016, we had undertakers in New Zealand <coughs> complaining, right? Undertakers were complaining because the weather, the winter, was too warm, and they were waiting for this cold snap so their business would pick up. <laughs> That's directly linked to cold, damp homes. We have some of the highest winter mortality rates in the world. That is not good. That's a very bad statistic. And it leads to depression. And we have a lot of youth suicides in New Zealand, and it's linked to cold housing, poor quality housing. Dreadful statistics. So what are the ways to think to respond to that? Well, you need to think about orientation, insulation, heating, and ventilation. They are the four key themes that I just want to talk to you quickly about now. Orientation, of course, is capturing the sun's energy. And, and if you have a square metre of window facing north, it's like a one kilowatt heater. So one square metre of window facing north capturing the sun is like a, a kilowatt heater, which is fantastic. So think about how you capture the sun's heat, get it into your home, and then when it's there, trap it in the home. So you need to have um, insulation around the whole thermal envelope of your home, thinking about the thermal envelope. That's doors and windows, as well as floors, ceilings and walls and ventilation, controlling the moisture at its source, getting rid of that moisture out of the bathroom, out of the kitchen, uh, out of the laundry, and, and opening doors and windows regularly. So really, really important to get those right, and then you'll have a good chance of having a healthy, warm, and happy house. So I'm just gonna give you some examples. Um, brands have done some research that says that a four millimeter gap reduces the performance of your insulation by 15%. Now let me show you what a four millimeter gap looks like. I'm holding my hand a highlighter pen, pen. A, a, you know what highlighter pens look like? That, the width of that tip is four millimeters. So if your insulation has got <coughs> bigger than that, you're losing 15% or more of the heat out of your dwelling. <coughs> so it's virtually no gap at all. And how that works, it's a bit like a sieve. You can imagine that you might block up most of those holes, but just leave a few at the bottom and the heat still pours through, just like that sieve, the water's gonna pour through. It works in the same way. So heat's going to find a way out if you leave gaps. Um, curtains are really important too, and I want because we often think about thermal performance, we think about the walls and the roofs and everything, but actually curtains can change the temperature of your room by four degrees without adding any heat. They are super efficient. So if you're thinking about being warm and healthy in your new home or the home you currently have, you can easily make that change. What happens is heat rises, comes up to the ceiling, and then it touches the top of your window, it falls, and you get this lovely circulation of, whoops, it is, of warm air, <laughs> warm air rising, and then cool air falling. And you, a, a, a curtain that's short, without helmets, creates this wonderful draft. So if you're sitting near a window, everyone knows you're sitting near a window, it's cold. But if you have a, a long curtain that reaches the floor, full length curtain, and either a helmet or another system I'll show you shortly, um, that's gonna stop that circulation of heat. But it's really important to have two layers. It needs to be thick in two layers. In fact, the best curtain you could come up with is actually a woolen blanket. The thicker, the better. The thicker, the better. So if you imagine two woolen blankets or two thick curtains together, then you've got trapped air. You've actually got three layers of space of air between you and the outside. So the cold air comes in through the window, the warm air goes in through the curtain, and you end up with this lovely protective layer, which is around your windows. You can get an R value of one, with two layers of thick curtains. That is equivalent to the best windows you can buy in New Zealand. It's a, roughly equivalent to those very expensive European windows that are coming in uh, that you saw in the wonderful super homes. So curtains are really important. Um, the other thing is to stop that circulation of air, a lot of people don't realize that there's actually a, a track you can buy, a curtain track, that just has a lid on it. And so that just stops the air falling onto the window, stops that gap, and it's just as we, we live here, and all you do is screw it onto the wall, and it gives you a lovely smooth curtain track because you don't have handles that interrupt the flow of the curtain. So you can just push the curtain and it goes swish and it opens fully, or swish and it opens and it shuts. Effortless window curtain opening and closing and it keeps you toasty warm. What a great invention. The other one I want to touch on is because about half of the heat in a house, in a modern insulated home, roughly half of the heat is lost through windows. Through windows and doors. So. Getting good windows and doors is super important. And I think one of the best ways to think about that is low E. Low E, which means low emissivity, allows the sun and energy to come in, 
uh, and, and be trapped in winter, so you are warmer in winter, and then reflect this heat in summer.